So today we're gonna be rebuilding the Cincinnati Reds, a team that looks like a quadruple A squad. They do have a decent farm system, but their MLB roster is a complete mess. And you know it's a mess when two of their highest paid players is Mike Boustakis, who's not even on the team anymore, and a player who retired quite a bit ago in Ken Griffey Jr. Yes, that Ken Griffey Jr. is the fourth highest paid player on the Reds. So with that in mind, I'm gonna take over. I'm gonna turn these Reds into the big red machine once again. Let's go win a World Series. So today's video is sponsored by Factor. And we've had Factor on the channel a few times already, and I'm gonna keep having them on here because their food's delicious. And who doesn't like good food? I mean, come on. And with spring and summer right around the corner, the weather's gonna start getting nicer, and I know you wanna be out there and enjoying it rather than being stuck in the kitchen around a hot stove or an oven. And Factor gives you more time. Not only does it get delivered straight to your door, it's not frozen, you just pop it in the fridge, and whenever you're ready, take it out, pop it in the microwave for two minutes, and you're good to go. It's America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. And you get nutritious, chef-prepared meals delivered straight to your door, like I said, and it gives you that time like I've mentioned. With 34 chef-prepared, dietitian approved weekly options, there's always something new to try. Not just lunch and dinner, there's also breakfast options as well, like egg bites, smoothies, and a lot more. And if you got a little sweet tooth or you need a little snack in between meals, they've got you covered as well with 45 different add-ons. One of the options we're trying today is the chorizo chili. It's got some cheese on top that you put on it, and they've got this little ranch sauce that is delicious. Like I said, pop the hole in the top, put it in the microwave for two minutes, and enjoy. It's simple as that. So if you want to cut back on takeout, if you want to get some calorie friendly items, get some more time in your day with the meal prep, Factor's got you covered. And why don't you head over to factor75.com or click the link down below and use the code ANT50 at checkout for 50% off your first box. Again, that's factor75.com or the link is in the description and use ANT50 at checkout for 50% off your first box. Again, thanks to Factor for sponsoring today's video. So looking at the squad, let's let's break it down actually. Let's let's talk about what we're looking like here. So the outfield, a lot of questions besides Jay Allen and Austin Hendrick. Hendrick? Hendricks. Let me see. Where's his name gonna pop up? Austin Hendrick. There really isn't much to look forward to in the outfield. Nick Senzel's been kind of a player that they've moved all around the field some injuries from time to time just really hasn't settled in and really just hasn't done much and he's 27 at this point so man that's tough you know you look at the rest of the squad you know you move to the infield you've got jonathan india who looks like he's going to be a pretty solid second baseman tyler stevenson has had some injuries but behind the plate looks like he's going to be a solid producer as well joey Votto coming to the end of his career it looks like he's going to start the year on the il for the first time he's going to miss an opening day and then at third base you've got spencer steer who I think he could be like an okay third baseman. We'll see what happens though. Hunter Green, Nick Lodolo, kind of the two at the top of the rotation. And then Alexis Diaz in the bullpen. And then of course, when you talk about prospects, they have they have a few. They have a few. Let's talk about some of those that I'm like kind of referring to. Ellie De La Cruz feels like it's the one with the highest ceiling. The guy's a freak. Just depends on if he can all put it together. You've got Cam Collier. So we'll see what happens there. Noel B. Marte, Matt McLean, Edwin Arroyo, all really solid players as well. And then, of course, like I said, Jay Allen, Austin Hendrick. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, it's kind of like these three, him and uh, Cam Collier are the ones that really look out for. So my plan for the team is to essentially kind of slowly build up the squad and maybe by season four or five, we're really pushing for a World Series unless we get kind of lucky and make it a little bit before. And this is what the team's going to look like to start the season. Again, I don't I don't know what to expect. Probably bad, bad out, like bad, bad results. So let's let's hop into it. Let's see what happens. I think I actually need to change this up. I need to call up. Uh, let's go. Let's call up Overton. Let's send down uh, Gibo and we'll go like Santian in this spot instead of uh, Gibo. And then we'll put uh, Overton at the long relief spot and we'll, we'll go from there. We'll see. We'll see. So scouting. See you guys at the draft. All right. Let's talk about the draft really quick. We have the seventh pick if I am correct. Let me double check. Yeah. Oh, it's already on the screen. Why am I? Yeah. We're, we're the seventh pick. So my draft queue. I'll just show you the top prospects really quickly so you guys can get an idea. So out of the top 100 that we have, the number one player is a closing pitcher who's 21 years old. Looks like he's going to be very good, but I'm going to avoid him because I don't want a closer. Second is going to be a pitcher who was originally ranked 92. So if he can fall to us, I'm going to take him. I don't necessarily want a pitcher, but I feel like that's just too good a value to pass up. Another reliever, so I didn't scout him. 
This guy's ranked third by MLB, but fourth by us. So I'm assuming he's going to get picked just because the CPU does like to pick good players. Um, MLB ranked him at 54. This guy's ranked fifth. So potentially the injury is the thing that's kind of pushing me away from him as well. He may end up being really good, but the injury is kind of scary. Uh, Danny Oakley, 22 rank, but we have him at six. I think this guy could also be good. His per nines are pretty low, but he is 18. So it's kind of tough to get an accurate report on him. Another 18 year old who was not ranked, but we found him to be the seventh best player in the draft. He opted out. So again, super scary, but the, look at those per nines for strikeouts. Insane, insane. I kind of want him. Plus the stash at 18, he looks like he's a, like an early 1900s boxer and I'm kind of in on it. And I, I, I want to draft him just solely based on that. Uh, we've got another pitcher who also looks crazy good. Um, who else? Position player wise, we've got a shortstop here who I'm, I'm a little interested in. I didn't add him to the, the queue, but I'm a little interested in him. And then we also have this shortstop here who did opt out, but looks pretty bad. He looks more like a fielding shortstop. So I think I'm going to avoid him. I'm going to take him off the queue, but I at least wanted to wanted to show him to you all. And then I think that was kind of it. I think the rest are kind of later picks if we can get them to fall to us. So most of them were pitchers. I tried to discover outfielders because that's what I really wanted to find outfielders. And I just couldn't, I couldn't get any, I spent like, I want to say I spent like five, six weeks discovering outfielders and I just couldn't, couldn't, couldn't get any good ones. So there we go. Let's see what happens. So number one is Jimmy Littleton, who was, um, oh yeah, three, and he was ranked four. So we did talk about him as a starting pitcher. Next up, number two, the Nationals. Who are they going to select? It is going to be, it is, ooh, who is that? As a large human being, who is that? Juan Calderon. So the eighth ranked player by us, another pitcher who I think this was probably like one of those safer bets. He's going to be pretty close to MLB ready. And then the Tigers, they get... Who are they going to choose at number three? Is this going to be the reach of the first round or is this going to be another safe pick here? Who is it? It is Christopher Christopher Kilgore. Huh? Starting pitcher. I looked at this guy and I did not scout him. I did not scout him. Uh, I, I did. That was he was going to be the last player I scouted. And I didn't, I didn't scout him. Now, that's really what it comes down to. So let's see who the Rangers take. Uh, realistically, I want, I probably want Blanco to fall to us. But yeah, I did look at this guy. I did look at him. He he looks like he's going to be pretty solid. Let's see. They took Coronado, who we had at number 11. And then who are the Athletics going to take? And then we'll take our pick. Be a little interesting to see who they take. They take Dar uh, Darnell Hopper. I did look at him, but... um. When I saw that the injury report came up, I decided to pass on him because I, I did say I was looking for outfield prospects and I didn't get any. So now it just really comes down to like, who do I want? Who do I want here? This guy's ranked sixth. This guy, do I take the guy with the stash or do I take like the guy we have at number two? Who has the higher? He's got the higher current overall. And that's kind of why I'm like really in on it. The opted out for the exam is a little worrisome though. And this guy's ranked second in the class, but like looking at his per nines, I don't know. I'm kind of torn. Do I go Blanco or do I go Webster? Webster probably still gets drafted before our next pick, which I believe is 37. So it's a competitive balance pick. Who would you take? Would you take the guy with the great stash? Would you take Danny Oakley, who we have ranked at sixth? Would you take Thornton, who we have at fifth? Or Blanco, who we have at two? I just don't really, I'm looking at Blanco and I don't really see what is making him so good. Which makes me worry that my scout did a terrible job. Um, man, I kind of want to take Webster, but I'm also afraid that potential is going to be lower. You know what I mean? Like, look at Blanco's 82 to 97. All right, I'm going to hope he's not ranked. I'm, I'm assuming he's going to get chosen. He looks like he's going to be very good. And I know I'm going to regret not taking him, but I'm going to take the better prospect. Am I? Am I? Am I? Oh, man. Um... I, I, I want to take Webster. I want to take him so badly. I want to see what what it is. The opted out scares me, though. I'm going to take Webster. I'm going to take Webster. Let's see what happens. All right, this shortstop was taken. We had him at 12. I think he went 9. Um, Kyle Saul. We had him pretty later in the draft. But in a surprising turn of events... Our guy Roger Blanco is still available, so uh, we 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 lucked out. Roger Blanco getting the team. 
That's what I'm talking about, man. Um, and then the rest of our picks are still available too. Ooh, I like that. Uh, what pick is this? 40, 41. I kind of want to take a position player just to have one. We only have him 55% scouted, but like we just took two really good pitchers. And I don't, even though his potential looks phenomenal, he is 21 years old. So I trust that potential is going to be somewhere in that range. I, I, I want to, I want a position player. He opted out. Is there any other position players that I like may have scouted? Let's see here. Third baseman. It's just the third baseman, right? Yeah, I'm going to take the third baseman. Ooh, hold on. Yeah, I'm going to take the third baseman. I'm going to I'm going to do it. I'm going to draft him and then if if somehow Devarco falls to us, he does, which is absolutely crazy to think about. We're somehow getting super lucky in this draft. And Sandy Rivera is available. We have him at 73. This is 108. I'm going to call it there. I'm 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 happy with my draft. Somehow everything Draft pick Sandy Rivera has an injury that will affect his long-term potential and current overall rating. Okay, okay, okay. So that was what, our, our fourth pick? That's okay. It, it happens, right? It happens. So it's good to know that you get a notification about that because that's the first time that it's happened to me where the potential and overall is being affected by that injury. So there we go. First time for everything, huh? All right, DeVarco was at 84% interest. I just bumped it up to 100. I think I had to pay like a million for him. And uh, I'm happy with that move right there. So DeVarco is signed. That means we can add somebody else. Um, Sandy Rivera, I'm now worried because of the injury um, about signing him. Like, is it really worth doing that? So I'm going to add Frank Dell. Frank Dell is probably going to be the toughest player to get um, sorted out, right? Like get, get his interest up high enough. So I'm going to put him in the number one spot. I also need to scout him. So let's get this moving. And hopefully we can... Uh, Get everybody signed up. Roger Blanco signs. Perfect. Got him done. And now let's see here. We'll throw him on and I'll I'll probably wait till the last couple days to see if we can get Rivera. So it, Frank Dell is actually injured. OK, let's see. Well, we didn't get the notification that said that his injury was going to affect him long term. So I'm assuming his overall and potential is going to hurt him a little bit. But he, the more we scout him, it does look like his rank is kind of where MLB had him. So I don't hate the pick that we had. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with everything that we did um, draft wise. So I'm going to take a shot here. I'm going to see if we can get him. What's his interest bonus demand? Okay. So I can bump it up. How many, how much percent? So 6%. All right. Let's, let's go a few more days. Let's, let's move him up to number one. So we get that extra percent. And uh, let's let's see what happens. I mean, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about our picks. I'm feeling pretty solid. So let's get this up here a little bit. Five mil. It's a lot of money, but he is motivated by his bonus demand. He signs Ken Webster. So we got our first two picks in the books. And then um, let's see here. You know what? I'll throw. Let's just see what Sandy Rivera's outcome is. And we'll go from there. So I'll see you guys for the final signing day. All right. So seeing not ranked for Rivera is a little worrisome. Makes me think that like that injury really just ruined his career. So let's, I mean, I think Dell's going to decline us. I really do. We got him. He is injured. Um, Bledsoe will throw as much money as we can at. Let's see what happens there. He also signs. And then I'm also going to try to sign Rivera because I want to see how badly the injury hurt him because right now he's got 51 to 60 for overall and 81 to 91 potential so like yes we're spending money on a player that's probably not going to have a career after this injury like this is a career ending injury that this guy had so let's just see what happens we'll give him a contract anyways i'm just interested because that's the first time that's happened to me all right so the shortstop i talked about he is 63 overall and 89 potential so not bad Christopher Kilgore was a player that I should have scouted. He looks pretty good. 93 potential, 65 overall. We've got Caleb Gomez, 89 potential, 62 overall. And Coronado is 84 potential, 70 overall. That's not too bad. 98 potential down here, but he's 55 overall. Let's see who else am I missing here that we were going to talk about. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Saul's there. Castro, Portillo. Oh, Juan Calderon, 88 potential, 65 overall. Okay, so he was what, the second pick? Cortez, third baseman, and then we have ours. So who was the first pick? The Pirates. Uh, 87 potential, Jimmy Littleton. There he goes. Um, we actually did fairly well. Rivera has 88 potential, though, so I wonder if something is going to change because it did say that his overall and potential were going to get hit. So it makes me think 
maybe it's not true i don't know we only have one player that has 79 potential and that's frank dell so everybody else has really good potential right you know we were torn between what pitcher to take and we ended up getting both one of them is a 74 overall with 86 potential ken webster at 18 years old so we're gonna have hunter green nick lodolo and ken webster all in the rotation i think we're looking pretty solid pitching wise you know blanco's 59 overall so he's gonna be a little bit more of a project frank dell looks like he can be a really solid platoon guy for us in the next couple seasons we've got devarco who's 64 overall 58 for rivera and then bledsoe's 55 overall he's looking like a terrence scorer he's just gonna steal bases for you but he's got the potential so Maybe he's got something, but I'm pretty happy with our picks. So we finished 68, 94, kind of expected, right? Not, not good. Where did we finish standings wise? Second to last in the National League, we were fourth worst and good Lord, the athletics were bad. Holy cow. <laughs> Holy cow. Okay. Uh, awards. We got Mookie Betts and Jordan winning MVP Shohei and Strider as your sign on winners. Let's see what else we got here. Rookie of the year goes to Kodai Sanga and Gunnar Henderson. All right, man, Gunnar Henderson's face model, a face scan looks terrible. They got to fix these. Please fix that MLB. Come on. Um, let's see what we had going on here. Who, who did we have? Connor Overton. How did he do? He actually wasn't too bad. He was pretty good. He was actually pretty solid. All right. Buck Farmer pitched 72 innings again. Not terrible that's not good i don't let that's bad that's real bad holy cow yeah yikes um tony santian is going up in rating so we'll, we'll see how he does that obviously not the best not great either lucas sims was good he didn't pitch and then alexis diaz was really solid so he looks like he's gonna be someone we can rely on in the bullpen hunter green struggled a little bit still fairly young so i'm okay with that same thing with lindolo like obviously i would like for them to perform better but I feel like we're, we're, we'll be fine. Um, Ashcraft, not bad, not bad. You know what? I think I think we can we can we can work with that in the rotation for a little bit. Weaver, yikes, and then uh, Luis Sesa, not bad again. So not terrible from the starting rotation. Already lineup wise, oh Ellie de, de la Cruz got called up. I, I guess I guess he's uh pretty good, pretty good. Noelvi Marte also got called up. I don't think he's ready just yet, but he was good in the 60 ABs that he had. Nick Solak. I mean, he's only a lefty guy. So like, we'll see. He's a good platoon player. We'll, we'll see what happens with that. Jason Vossler. The OPS is not bad. And then Kurt Casale, honestly, not bad at all. Like pretty good off the bench. What else we got going on here? Jake Fraley was kind of disappointing. Same thing with Newman. Um, Not bad. Joey Votto was pretty solid. Oh, ah. Uh, Pretty similar to what Stevenson actually, but like 24 home runs, not bad. Tyler Stevenson wasn't too bad either. Um, Will Myers, again, pretty similar. Um, you would like better though. Actually, <laughs> our three, four, five, six hitters were all very similar. Average on base percentage and OPS. So there's that. Um, Spencer Steer, we'd, we'd like the little, little bit better. Like the average isn't bad on base percentage. is a tad low. OPS is a little bit low too. Friedel, meh, and then Nick Senzel, again, like, it's like, a, it's like average slash below, at, like slightly below average, right? Like we would like for it to be above average. We want it to be better. So let's, let's get moving into the off season. The Yankees defeat the Padres in the 2023 World Series. And here we go. Let's, let's see what we got. Chase Anderson retires. Robinson Cano somehow makes the Hall of Fame. Man, who do we... Who do we bring back? Strickland, no. Chad Pinder didn't even play. He's going up, but I don't think he's going to do that again. Buck Farmer wasn't terrible, but again, I'm a little worried with that deep potential. Joey Votto, I'm going to keep around. He might retire in real life, but I'm going to keep him around. He's the guy. Um, Luis Sesa, I don't know, but I'll, I'll bring him back. He wants five mil. What? I feel like uh, I was going to have him at like the the five spot in our rotation but i don't know if i can do that now like luke weaver probably the same how much does luke weaver want about the same okay uh, we'll keep one of them we'll, we'll throw him in the rotation we'll give him five and a half mil which realistically is not a lot for a pitcher but he'd like to spend it elsewhere and then let's bring in will myers for one more season just because 
I don't think I'm going to go too crazy in the offseason. Also, this free agency isn't that great this year in real life and also in the game, obviously. But yeah, like, yes, you have Shohei. Yes, you have Nola. Yes, you have Urias. Like the pitching is good. But then once you start looking at like the players who are available, like Renfro, Teoscar are solid. Bader's solid. Pollock, Hap is solid. But there really aren't any like big names no Trey Turner you know kind of like what happened this offseason Bogarts Turner Correa things like that there really isn't anybody like that I mean like I said there's some good pitching there's Shohei that's kind of the main one that you're looking for this offseason so I don't know what to do I guess we don't go big and maybe just try to find some pieces that'll help us build because like m maybe Ellie takes what's Ellie can play shortstop technically so what we could do is we have him at short First baseman's gonna be Vado, and then the other spot that's available is right field, which would be Will Myers. Myers. So realistically, what we could do is maybe look for an outfielder through a trade, some way, shape, or form, or just get like a, a big bat between one of these two. It's not bad. Season two is gonna start with Jake McCarthy becoming a red for TJ Friedel, Alex Young, and Brian Ray. So you know what? I'm gonna see what Jake McCarthy's all about. There's also another outfielder that I want to go after, and that's James. Outman of the Dodgers. I want to see how he progresses, see if we can give him some opportunities in center field. Honestly, he might start in center field for us because I'm not sold on Nick Senzel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see they do want Michael Ciani. That's huge for us. All right. I will also give them him. Any one of these work? What about Alejo Lopez? Mm. What about those two combined? And we get James Outman. There we go. All right. So for season two, we've got Green Lodolo, Ashcraft. I brought in Waka. He's coming off a pretty good year with the Padres. So I thought, you know what? For $8 million, maybe a little trade piece at the deadline. Sesa came back. We've got Justin Dunn as a long reliever. We brought in Weisler or Whistler. He's got $3.2 million deal. We'll see how he does for us. And who else? Danilson Lamette brought him in on a $2.7 million deal. Again, kind of trade pieces. That's kind of what we picked up at the uh or during the off season i'm looking for pieces that we can move yasmani grandal bringing him back to where his career started with the reds and uh, just a one-year deal just as a backup catcher fraley ikf as a backup shortstop i just needed somebody that could play shortstop as a backup that that was literally the only reason why i brought him in senzel vossler and then our lineup of mccarthy who we just traded for will myers stevenson india winker uh no vado Winker, India, Lord, uh, Steer, De La Cruz, and James Outman. And then I'm, I'm going to sort this out later. But you, you guys can kind of see what the main squad's looking like. We're probably going to need a first baseman come the end of the year. So we'll see what happens. We've also got our, our guy, Ken Webster, right around the corner. We'll see how he progresses. I need those hits and walks per nine to be a little bit higher. Same thing with his control. Otherwise, I think we're pretty good. I'm pretty excited to see what we can do this season. So let's get to the draft. Probably the last draft we talk about. Here we go. Douglas Keo. We got him at number two. MLB has him at number three. He looks pretty good power wise, speed wise as well. 21 years old, 81 and 93 potential. We'll see what happens with him. He's probably going to get taken before us. Esteban Gomez is another player. He looks like it's just one of those safe picks. We have him at number four. MLB has him at number five. And then let me show you like the number one and number two guys really quickly. Number one is a closer. Number two is Douglas Keo. Another closer for three. Second base is Esteban Gomez, who we talked about. Pablo Morales is a guy that I'd be okay with taking him. Um, I'd really like to avoid taking pitchers, though, because I just feel like we never really see them. We, I mean, plus we took a lot of pitchers last round, uh, or last draft, and like Webster is going to be one of those good ones. Um, Zane Link, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. We have him at six. He was originally 31, and then obviously Edmund Snowden, we have him at seven. And we're pick number six, by the way. So uh, this third baseman's another one I'm intrigued by. 86 to 91 potential, 68 to 73 overall. He did opt out, but those contact numbers, I'm I'm all in. He's 5'11". I kind of wanted him as a first baseman. 5'11's kind of pushing it, but he's got decent arm accuracy, decent fielding, decent reaction. Stealing looks okay. But honestly, he looks like he's going to be a, a decent player. It's just the opted out worries me. Uh, Avalos. 
another player that like again looks like he's just gonna be like a safe pick right 18 years old good contact versus righties like elite contact versus righties almost already really good fielding six foot four so he could play first base because that arm strength and accuracy looks pretty good or pretty bad i should say uh reactions looks great vision discipline realistically i think this guy could be a pretty good first baseman for us so we'll see what happens uh via we have him at number 11 he was projected to be a number one pick and then uh, Manny Ramirez, not the hitter, a pitcher this time, again, looks decent. So we've got a center fielder as well at 13. So let's see. Honestly, I don't mind this pick now that I've looked a little bit further into his his player card. Same thing with this Strickland guy. I, I, I kind of like it. The opted out worries me. But um, I'm thinking if we're going to go for a pick, I'm looking, hoping that Douglas Keogh falls to us. Or we can take Gomez and be a little safe on this one. Because um, I, I, I'm thinking a position player, unless like a crazy pitcher falls to us, which the only crazy pitcher that I'm like all in on is nobody, realistically. All of them, I'm like kind of like, let me get them later on in the draft. So let's see what happens. We might get lucky. Number one pick is Keo. Number one pick is Keo. Douglas Keo goes to the Nationals. Yeah, makes sense. Number two pick is Gomez. Oh, okay. Okay. So Gomez two, who's number three? Who's going to be the pick? So we've lost two of our top players that we wanted, which is unfortunate. And now we've got the beard here. Who is this? Is this Snowden? So it's a pitcher. Okay. So we've got a couple picks before us. Um, I wouldn't mind Strickland or Avalos. Yeah, they're projected to be a little bit lower than our pick. But to be honest, I'd be okay with that. Like Morales looks okay. Zane Link got taken at the four spot which we had him on our board. Morales is also still there, but like I really, via, via, via. Okay, so a pitcher. So I think, I think I'm think i gonna, I don't wanna say I'm gonna reach here because we are six and he's projected to be 10. And then also he's projected to be nine. But I, I just think, let's get a position player. So do I take Avalos or do I take Strickland? The opted out really worries me. I'm not gonna lie. I think this guy projects more as a first baseman. This guy looks like he's an elite hitter, though. I think I want to take a player that's going to help us out immediately. I think Avalos is really good, though. I, I really do. I think he's a better first baseman than Strickland will be, but I think Strickland's going to be the better player immediately. Like, look at that arm, the fielding, the reactions, the stealing, the vision, the contact left and right. It's just the injury. Is he injured? The opt out. So do I take it? Do I play it safe? And do I go Avalos? This is tough. This is the tough stuff. Um, yeah, let me know in the comment section who would you would have like who would have you gone with? I think I'm gonna go Strickland. I think I'm gonna go with the safer pick here. And um, I feel like we also do need a righty in the lineup compared to ah, man, I really like the looks of his stats. But I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take Strickland. I'm gonna take Strickland and then maybe maybe we get lucky and uh Avalos falls to us at 41. I doubt it will happen, but I'm gonna go Strickland here. Fingers crossed he's not injured. What a name for this guy, by the way, Cliff Serna Ruiz. But let me see where Avalos went to the Orioles. So we're definitely going to take a look there. So this round here, we're at 41. He was projected to be 36. We'll take Maldonado. I don't really have a lot of players scouted this year's draft because I really wasn't too sure. Let me see. Who do I have scouted? 55. When's our next pick? 73. Okay. So he opted out as per usual, but we'll take, we'll take another pitcher. There's nothing wrong with um taking pictures here and then for the last pick let's just get to our next pick i'm just gonna take a blind guess at a top 100 player let's go with this shortstop and then that'll be my last pick we'll sim the rest of the draft let's go take a look at who we're gonna sign all right we're six days out from the deadline i'm gonna try to sign the players here and see what we get so strickland is balanced so i'm gonna try to bump it up as much as possible he signs with us awesome uh maldonado he was bonus demand as well so i'm gonna throw as much money as possible he declined ah you greedy sob all right um kimball what about you what are you thinking all right he declines as well so let's let's throw on a third player um honestly i'm not i don't think like i'm just i'm not gonna get him high enough anyways so let's go with let's see what this guy's about um and then let's he's already pretty high but yeah let's let's do that and let, let's hope we get these guys signed up all right maldonado's up to 77 percent. can we get him yes we do we get him perfect love to see it kimball can we get him signed up let's see he signs as well awesome 
And then Mateo, can we get Mateo signed up a three for three day? No, sadly not. Okay, that's unfortunate, but it's fine. We've got one more chance to sign our players, but first, trade deadline day. Let's see what the Dodgers have to offer. Gavin Stone for India, get out of here. All right, I'm going to the Giants. I'm going to send them Will Myers for Harold Ramirez and RJ Dabovich. I don't, do they need an outfielder? I guess it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I'm, I want uh, Harold Ramirez to play first base for us because Joey Votto's starting to tank. I've moved Frank Dell over to first base. Uh, at double A, he was hitting like over 300, crushing it. So he got called up at 18 to triple uh, A. We actually had a couple call ups to triple A, but I needed to make a couple moves really quickly. So what I'm going to do here is Harold Ramirez is going to play first. Sadly, Joey Votto is going to get sent to the bench. And then what I'll do is I'll just put Fraley in right field. And then that'll be the change for us. So a simple change. Um, I did want to point out triple A though. We've got Collier who's up to a 74 with a potential already. He was mashing in double A. Called him up to triple A. We've also got Frank Dell. And then we've also got Noel V. Marte who was also killing it in double a so we've made a couple changes to the the minor league rosters and yeah i mean look at the team uh jesse winker i don't know if i mentioned we brought him back he's mashing i'm gonna trade him while he can uh can be traded because he's slowly decreasing i think we probably need a reliever um i haven't even looked at pitching to be honest if anybody's been doing well but i'm just gonna try to find somebody that like looks decent the bill chris matt i'm kind of in on that budget's the problem okay so i gotta go with somebody that has some money to work with so how's cabrera meh let's see who else ashby no let's see let's go to the the marlins they've got aj puck they've also got like nobody else uh, um come on give me some sort of reliever barlow brash how's brash looking no muñoz how's muñoz looking really good i might go muñoz i think that might be the move Unless there's somebody else that catches my attention really quickly. Dylan Coleman. No, I'm going to pass on him. What about Karen Jack? Yeesh. Sandlin looks the same. Anthony Bass is 36, so I don't want him. So you know what? Ooh, who's this Sean Flores guy? He looks good. I'm uh, going to take him. They can have Jesse Winker. There we go. I'm going to trade Jimmy Nelson for Hunter Harvey. Sure. Um, who else do I need to get rid of? I need to get rid of... Let's see who else. There was somebody else that I needed to get rid of. And now I can't find him. Lamette. Actually, Lamette's doing well. Someone was doing poorly in the bullpen. Who was it? Antone. Sims isn't doing that great. Neither is Diaz. Good lord. Okay. Let's see. How's our pitch? What is going on with Hunter Green, man? But everybody else looks pretty good. Honestly, we might leave it like this. And then, as you can see, uh, Christian Encarnacion Strand got called up. I want to see how he does. We'll see. Uh, he's going to be our DH slash first base backup. And we're going to rock like this for the rest of the year. We're kind of in the postseason race. But to be honest, if we make it, if we don't make it, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. I feel pretty good about where we are moving forward. Look who's killing it. Ken Webster. So season two is looking solid. I'm liking what I'm seeing. We've got some pieces to build forward as well. I, I can't complain. Last chance to sign our players. Let's go, Mateo. Give us a yes he declined all right whatever i don't i don't want you anyways and uh we'll go with montalvo we'll just offer as much money as we can boom he signs and then velasquez what are we saying all right i didn't, I didn't want them anyways they can leave um oh we'll, we'll try to sign this guy we'll, we'll see what happens though he declines as well Psh, i didn't want him anyways all right um let's go take a look and see how we did. So Elliot Strickland, 84 potential. Like I said, I thought he was going to be a safe pick. And I'm happy with that. He's 66 overall. Look at those hitting numbers. Look at the fielding. I'm happy with that pick. I'm happy with that pick. It was a safe pick, but I'm happy with it. 59 overall overall for Maldonado. He's got 89 potential. 93 potential for Kimball. And Montalvo had 77 potential. Let's go take a quick look. Uh, Stevens had 84 potential, 64 overall. Snowden had 84 potential. We talked about him. Um, Zane Link, 71 overall, 95 potential. Yeah, he was pretty good. He was pretty good. I think he went like one or two picks before us. And let's see. Edward Quinones. Who is this? 96 potential, 73 overall. Wow, he wasn't even on my board. Dang. Okay. Avalos, 84 potential, 68 overall. Good fielding, good. Yeah, he's a first baseman. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I feel like we didn't go wrong either pick. 
either pick, we would have been fine. Yeah. He's a little bit of a better hitter. Let's see, where are we? Actually, I think Strickland's going to be just fine. Yeah. I, I think I think if I wanted, I, I think I should have taken Avalos because I was looking for a first baseman. But realistically, I'm, I'm pretty happy with uh, both picks that we got. So 95 potential for Brian Lopez. I think I think we did good. I think we did just fine. I'm pretty happy with our picks. And uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Gomez had 86 potential. He's 73 overall. Yeah, I think that's it. 80, 83 potential, 72 overall for Adrian Arturo. And then Douglas Keogh was 71 overall, 88 potential. He looks pretty solid. Kevin Tanana was a pitcher that I like looked at, but he was too low rated, 93, uh, 93 potential. But I'm pretty happy with our draft too. All right, we were absolutely terrible in the second half. As you can see, we finished the season on a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight game losing streak. So there, there's kind of telling how we how we finished off the year. Awards, we've got Alonzo and Semyon are your MVPs. Framber and Sanga, Cy Young, Acuna, Semyon, batting title. Okay. Yeah, Sanga's just nasty. Uh, so uh, Valdez was too. Semyon? I did. He did hit 338. Okay. All right. Stanton with 45 home runs. Or Rosarena with 35. Alonzo. Okay. Machado put up a, a good year too, like a really good year. And then if we take a look at rookie of the year, it went to Dean Cochran, who looks really good, but the potential his career is basically over after this year. Holy cow! And who else? Jeff Morales. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at our team. How did we do? So who was our long reliever? Justin Dunn. He was pretty solid. Okay, that's good to know. We got Ken Webster up to a 77. He should be right around the corner for making his big league debut. Who else? Yeah, I like seeing that. Like seeing that. That's kind of gross. He might be done. He might be a player I just let walk. Lamette was good. I don't know if he's going to be good after this year, but I'll try to give him one more season. Harvey, Harvey was good. Sims turned it around towards the end of the year. And then Diaz, he blew seven saves. Would like for it to be a little bit better. Green struggled this year. I'm hoping he can turn things around. Lodolo improved, which is awesome to see. Ashcraft, again, if he can be my four or five, oh, it looks like he's kind of capped. And we might be have we might be having to look for somebody else. Waka, again, probably should have traded him. Definitely should have traded him. But I'm not gonna lose sleep over it and then say it's kind of the same thing could have traded him while he had some value all right so steer got sent down it's looking like he's not going to be our third baseman moving forward so it might actually be a good idea that we trade or we drafted that third baseman because uh we do we do have dell who could play third base uh incarnacion strand could also play third base technically and then ellie de la cruz technically could play third base too so we could have a shortstop we could like go after a shortstop instead uh joey vado is down to a 63 overall i think he might retire and if he does then we're you know we'll probably get someone new cam collier is another guy we could look at for third base honestly we're we're kind of set huh we're looking pretty good in terms of infield prospects and just infield depth yes money grandal kind of bad uh same thing with ikf Vossler as well and Stuart Fairchild up to B potential so he's probably going to be my backup outfielder uh Noel Marte got called up I don't think he's going to be ready just yet but it's exciting to have him into the team and then Nick Solak didn't play at all Jake McCarthy was pretty solid pretty happy with that so let's see what he can do moving forward Jake Fraley so we've got Jake McCarthy Jake Fraley not a bad season definitely improved Tyler Stevenson pretty similar to what he did last year harold ramirez i like the on base percentage and the average so he can be like my outfield slash first baseman that we use india was really good love that ellie de la cruz yikes i need him to turn things around like really badly um okay Ooh, okay uh and then outman struggled quite a bit okay and carnacion strand was kind of nice was kind of nice he might be able to be our stopgap for the meantime. Cardinals defeat the Guardians. And as we head into the offseason, I've got an idea of what to do. I've got an idea of what to do for sure. So, Waka, no. IKF, no. Sims, let's go like, let's go two years. Bullpen. Actually, we'll go three-year club option. We'll go 10 mil on him. Uh, Weisler, Whistler, whichever it is, I'll give him four and a half for a season. 
Lamette, again, one year will go three and a half for him. And then the rest can walk. Joey Votto didn't retire, but I just can't put him in the lineup anymore. So we're going to pretend that he retired and we're going to move on. I'm going to add who I need to add here. I'm going to make sure we sign everybody. So what I'm thinking here is this season, season three is probably another one of those like, let's coast. Season four, Collier comes in at third. And who who else? Like, let's take a look at the depth chart really quick. So we'll have Collier at third, Elliot short, India at second. First base could be Dell or that third baseman that we drafted. And then the outfield, McCarthy, Outman, and then realistically, whoever else we can get. And then pitching wise, we just got to figure everything out because we have Green, Webster, Lodolo, and then maybe figure out these last two spots, which it looks like one of our prospects, Andy DeBarco, could also be in play. We actually drafted fairly well. And we got pretty lucky with these prospects developing quickly. So I think we're good. All right, for season three, we're getting that. MF named Randy. Randy Rosarena's in the team for Sencel, Solak, and Pittich. So there we go. And that's that's really about it that I wanted to do besides the signings that we made. So let's get into season three. Season three, this is a squad here. And again, it's a kind of a coast season. We've got Encarnacion Strand. I want to see how he does. Spencer Steer is basically holding the spot for Collier. And then next year we're gonna have possibly Marte up. Collier will be up, maybe Dell, you know, like he's, he's got a chance. And then we've got like possibly Strickland comes up. So I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to fit everybody in. So realistically, okay. So India at second shortstop is going to be De La Cruz. Third base will be Collier first base, whoever does well. And then we still got to figure out what we're going to do with Noel V. Marte. Cause he's got to get some time too. So may, or maybe, maybe De La Cruz. Hold on, who's who's gonna be the worst fielding out of the three? Probably De La Cruz, to be honest. So maybe De La Cruz is, I mean, I, technically India is, but maybe De La Cruz becomes a DH. We'll figure it out, we'll figure it out. But this is the team. Yeah, I don't really know what we're gonna do. We're, I'm gonna have to figure something out. Um, I brought in Carson Kelly as our backup catcher for the next two years, and that was, that was about it. I mean, pitching wise though, I brought in Glasnow and Lopez, both on five-year deals. Basically, the rest of the rebuild, I want them to be kind of like our three or four, maybe our two. Depends on how everybody does. It might actually be maybe something like this, just because Hunter Green's in 83. And then next year, we've got Ken Webster coming up for sure, possibly even this year. And then I brought in Caleb Ferguson. We needed a lefty. I gave him a, a three-year deal club option, so it's probably going to be a two-year deal. But we'll we'll wait and see how things play, uh, play out. So yeah, we, we've got some players. We picked up Sean Flores in the trade last year, and I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about everything. Davovich was also acquired, but we've got DeVarco as well. But let's see what Ken Webster can do because I think he's going to get called up this year. That's the squad for season three. All right, so I let the CPU handle this year's draft and they've got a crate. We had the sixth pick and look who they got. What? Um, So he looks pretty good. We also got some other, like they got the 12th ranked pick even though we haven't scouted them. So I don't really trust them. But um, yeah, I, I just let the CPU handle it because realistically these guys aren't going to feature unless they were like really nasty so i'm gonna get to the deadline we're like a 500 team right now so we'll, we'll see what happens uh it's not going to plan all right at the deadline i'm gonna leave it as is um we're we're five games out we are one and a half games out of the wild card and you're probably thinking why wouldn't i make any changes i like our team and as you can see collier's up We've also got Jay Allen up, so they're going to get some time. I've made some changes to the lineup. We're going to rock with the youth with this team. I want this team to thrive with the prospects. Marte's right around the corner. I just want to give him everyday time rather than not have everyday time in the majors. And then also Strickland got called up because he was mashing in double A. So yeah, yeah, that's happening. Also, Webster's called up. So yeah, and Flores, who we got through the trade last year. So we're rocking with the youth. Let's see how it works. All right, we got this closer. We'll see what happens with him. I'm literally just offering what I can to whoever I can, and we'll we'll go with there. He declined. It's not a big deal. And to be honest, I'm not too worried about everybody else. We can we can throw some money at this guy. See if he'll he'll take it. Okay. Actually, we'll just we'll just try to sign them all. Who cares? Um, he declines. And last one, 
uh we'll throw all the money that we have at him and he declines all right so let's let's go see how the cpu did for us i don't really know what to expect to be honest 89 potential shortstop 65 overall yeah that's that's cool with me uh 75 potential 76 potential 89 potential you know what I'll take it, you know, for some, for a draft that I wasn't too involved in. Chris Cerna Ruiz. Wait a second. Wasn't he, wasn't he part of the draft last year? Like, didn't he get drafted last year? Because he was from Venezuela. So did he, did he, he's, he's one of the players that came back, right? So he's a player that came back, but he got drafted. Let me see. There's two Cliff Cerna Ruizes from Venezuela? hold on oh cliff and chris cliff and chris okay they, they've got to be brothers got to be brothers we'll, we'll we'll leave it at that um i just want to see if there's a generational player in this draft um cliff and chris really that's what you she's okay um it doesn't look like it so i haven't so no generational talent in this draft okay all right but you know what cpu did pretty good with that that um that shortstop i'll take that for sure that was a that was a good pick by the cpu good job cpu i'll take it all right so like i said we're gonna rock with the the prospects i'll see how it works all right we made it as a wild card team taking on the cardinals look at this little streak we had at the end yeah we lost this game here but that's that's a good little win streak to make the postseason right at the end of the year standings wise we did finish eight games behind the cardinals but we snuck in just barely oh actually three games for the wild card so that little streak at the end might have been it lodolo had the most strikeouts but you know what i'm really happy with what this team did this is this is this is a fun little team we're building here awards pete alonso's mvp with the cardinals whoa manessis finished second mcclanahan is your mvp which means he won cy young it's blake snell with the dodgers oh the dodgers have a lineup hold on let me see something here so the Dodgers have Bader, Lux, Betts, Otani, Trace Thompson's a goon in franchise. Like, this is a quiet year for him. We've got Will Smith, Freddie Freeman, Edwin Rios is back, Michael Bush. Then they've got Edward Julien somehow, Andy Pajes. And then they've got Bueller, May, Gonsolin, Snell, Vesia, Phillips, Gratterall, and then, of course, Otani as well. That is a scary team. Holy cow. Uh, reliever of the year went to Edwin Diaz and Andrew Chafin. I got offered Andrew Chafin as a as a trade, and I turned it down. <laughs> uh, DeAndre Beard is your MVP, or not MVP, Rookie of the Year for the Tigers. And on the National League side, it was Mason Martin with 33 home runs. Wow. Okay. Okay. Let's go take a look at our squad. How did we do? Graham Ashcraft took over for Justin Dunn. How did he do? Pretty similar stat line between the two. Hunter Harvey got sent down, which I don't understand because he was fantastic. Anybody else get sent down that shouldn't have? No. Okay. So Whistler, not too bad. Actually, good, good. Not too bad is underselling him. He was good. Ferguson was fantastic. Flores, yikes. He pitched 13 innings, but yikes. Uh, Sims was unbelievable. Lamette definitely did struggle, but Alexis Diaz was good. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to go with, we're going to go Harvey. How is Santian? Maybe give him the opportunity instead of Flores for the postseason. And then I got to figure out what's going on here. So Santian here. Lamette will go right there. And then, oh wait, hold on. And then we'll send down Lamette because he was terrible he was so bad this season so we'll not release him but remove him from the postseason roster and there we go pitching wise Lodolo at the top of the rotation is looking like a really good ace for us Glasnow definitely did struggle I need him to be a little bit better Lopez was fantastic Hunter Green -y. Um, and then Webster again nothing too crazy but 70 innings I'll take that for your first year in the majors at 19 years old 19 years old talk about a crazy player carson kelly off the bench i'll take that for my catcher noelby Marte got the call up instead of let's see here who who was sent down strand we were, I, kn I knew about strand he got sent down oh probably barrero yeah oh, man strickland's up to a 71 already I, he's got to be in the team huh uh jay allen got some time he was facing lefties because his lefty numbers were pretty good struggled struggled and so did outman 
uh, Stuart Fairchild, not, not too bad, not too bad. And then we take a look at our starting lineup, Jake McCarthy. I need him to be a little bit better. I need him to be a little bit better. Uh, same thing with Jonathan Indy. I need him to step up his game. Stevenson though, killing it, killing it. Harold Ramirez, eh. Uh, Rosa Reina wasn't too bad with 31 home runs, almost 100 RBIs. Camp Collier, we got a superstar on our hands, huh? De La Cruz. Ooh. Left side of the infield's looking nasty. And then you've got Steer, who's like, doing just fine too i moved him over to first base and he had a career year i don't think he's going to improve too much more so i think strickland's going to be our first baseman next year i know it sounds crazy we could also go dell we could also go dell um so we'll, we'll figure something out because i'm not sold on harold ramirez and then fraley came in for the struggling outfielders and he did well he did really well so yeah we got a team huh We've got a, we've got like a sneaky team. It's one of those. So let's take on the Cardinals and we advance. Ooh. Okay. So Hunter green, and then it'll be Webster. We get back to back wins. We're taking on the Dodgers or the Mets. It's going to be the Dodgers. Pablo Lopez starting this game, huh? Let's go. Let's, let's flip them. We'll go green there and we'll rock like that for this game against the Dodgers where we lose, we lose, we win. We lose Webster. I'll get. I'll give him the postseason experience. We lose, but you know what? That is a good outing to the NLCS in our first year in the postseason with a with a crazy young team. Season three. Talk about a win. I'm I'm pumped about the team. The Orioles. Whoa! The Orioles beat the Dodgers. What do the Orioles got? The Orioles are stacked in franchise this year. Mullins Henderson. Already 90 overall for Gunnar Henderson at 23 years old. Verdugo, solid pickup. Mountcastle, a 90. Rutschman, a 95. And then they've got some nice little role players here. And then the bench looks juiced as well. They've made some trades. Yeah, good lord. Ooh, the Orioles are going to be a fun franchise team. Okay, okay, I see that. All right, let's get to the offseason. I, like, I feel like we're in a good spot. I feel like we don't need to do much like at all oh i wanted to check to see if our sandy rivera it said we got an injury like career ending injury almost and he's been fine he's just been slowly progressing all right harold ramirez maybe we keep him as like a lefty guy instead of one of these outfielders well do i have an open spot right now i don't I want to bring up Elliot. I want to keep rocking with these young players that we have. So maybe we just let Ramirez go. Or do we let Steer go to the minor leagues and then we'll just keep Ramirez for that lefty spot instead of Steer? Yeah, I think that's what we do. Okay, what does he want for like a year? Let's go, let's go 3.5. He's good, but he's regressing. He's no. And then Hunter Harvey's been good. So I'm gonna do. Let's go, let's go three years, two years for him. We'll give him two mil and we'll give him a bullpen spot because he was good. He was really good. So let's keep moving forward and I'll, I'll fix this for sure. Arbitration wise, but like looking at the team, I think we're set. I, I do like Jake McCarthy. It's just, he's not doing what I've seen him do for other players or other CPUs, other teams in rebuilds. So I think. If I can, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out and get someone big in the offseason uh, for the outfield. I think pitching wise we're good. I guess we we could use a, a bullpen arm, and I think that's probably a more a bigger priority because we don't necessarily have anybody besides Flores who could come in. Which I want to give him another shot, but realistically we do we do need another free agent. So. Let's see, who do we have? Oh, we've got plenty of options. I'm thinking he's the one. Um, give give him whatever he wants. Probably a big contract. That's fine. So there's that. And then I still think we can get an outfielder. Maybe Kyle Tucker. Kyle Tucker's kind of fun. Not going to lie. I think that's the move. Season four, we're ranked seventh. And you know what? I'm happy with that. Lodolo, Green, Lopez, Glasnow, Webster. DeVarco is making his debut. Flores is back. Ferguson, Sims, Harvey. I missed out on um, Helsley. He went to the Braves for a very similar contract to what I offered him. I think I actually offered him more. So that's 
that's unfortunate that we didn't get him. But I got uh, Jordan Romano, one-year deal. He's been really good, so I'm hoping he can at least give me something similar. And then obviously Diaz is still there. Lineup-wise, Kelly, Fraley, Ramirez, Outman, and Fairchild. I kind of need a middle infielder here, huh? But who's getting sent down? Probably Outman. Outman's been kind of a bust, so I'm going to send him down. And then we're going to call up um who can i call up i need i need like middle infield let's go let's go mclean and we'll rock like that so there we go we've got mccarthy india stevenson kyle tucker has signed on a big boy contract i think it was like 27 mil over five years yeah it was pretty big uh rosa reina still here collier Marte, elliot strickland and ellie de la cruz i mean look at that team that team's looking real good really good yeah I'm psyched. I think this is, we're ranked sixth, first in contact. Lot, not a lot of power, but really good pitching. Defense sucks. I don't care. We're winning it all. Wild card, once again, again, playing the Cardinals. So we know what we're getting into. And let's see here. It's the same. Oh, we'd actually have to play the Braves. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I think we played the Braves last year too, if we if we advance. So Tatis is the MVP. We didn't win an award, an award through the four years, have we? That's crazy. Zach Allen wins Cy Young. Kopech with the Angels was second place. Bieber wins it with the Cubs. Acuna and Ben Attendi are the batting title winners. Herget and Hels Hel Helsley, dang, is reliever of the year. And then Jared Schuster and Jackson Holiday are the rookies of the year. So, oh, okay. Let me fix this. So we had Davarco. So who did they call up instead? Dabovich. Let's send him down really quickly. I think that's that's all. All right, perfect. Let's see. De Ooh, DeVarco struggled, huh? Yeesh. Flores was good, though. 81 innings, killed it. Love it. Ferguson struggled a little bit. Hate to see that. Sims was fantastic. Harvey, probably his worst year, but I can't complain. He's been fantastic every year since. Romano was unbelievable, and so was Alexis Diaz. He had that one bad year in 2024. Ever since, he's been lights out. Lodolo. <laughs> what? Hunter Green was good, though. Lopez was solid. Glasnow was really good. I'll take it from Webster. That's not too bad at all. All right, lineup-wise, Carson Kelly, yeah. Uh, Fraley only had eight at-bats, but he mashed. Um, I, I think he deserved more time, especially based off the last two years, for sure. Oh, well. Uh, you got you to have those role players, and he's that role player. Harold Ramirez was only inverse left. He's hitted really well. Outman only had one at bat, and then Fairchild. Didn't I set? Wait, hold on. So wait, hold on, hold on. I had Steer up, right? Who did I have? I, oh wait, McLean was up. Depot all right, all right. Um, let's let's get back to the major leagues. McCarthy. See, that's what I was looking for. Why couldn't he do that every other season? Uh, Jonathan India. Power numbers went a little bit down, but like, okay, I can work with that. Stevenson has been like our best hitter this entire rebuild. Kyle Tucker is regressing, but still had a really strong season. A Rosa Reina, love it, love it. Cam Collier took a step back, but still 27 home runs. Like, that's that's insane. Ellie De La Cruz, all right, not too bad. Strickland in his rookie year, hey, that's good. How, how come he wasn't in the rookie of the year race? Like, come on, come on. He should be there. And then we also had Noel V. Marte, who in his first full season was, was okay. Was okay. So, Cardinal time. Already cards. Let's do this. Come on, Lopez. Yes, there we go. Alrighty, so I've adjusted the rotation against the Braves. We win, we win, and we sweep them. Again, the Dodgers keep us away from a World Series. So, do I want Lopez going game one? I might go Lopez Lodolo. Glasnow Green. I think that's what I'm gonna rock. I think that's it. Yeah. Against the Dodgers. Are they still got that? Do they still have that cracked lineup? Man. Alrighty, facing the Dodgers. This is what we need to take at least one of these away games. And we take both, outscoring them 21 to 1. We lose that one though. That's kind of tough. We win. And Ken Webster, can he wrap it up? He can't. But so, but I know Pablo Lopez can. Yes, yes. Taking on the Mariners now. Let's go take a look at their lineup. I know they have Juan Soto. It looks like Otani goes to the Dodgers and Juan Soto goes to the Mariners a lot. Like a lot, a lot. Uh, they've got Trevor Story as well. And O'Neill Cruz, Royce Lewis, Teoscar. Who's Cole Young? 
I'm not familiar with Cole Young. Is he a real prospect or is he someone that they drafted? Harry Ford's there. I mean, this is going to be a tough matchup. Luis Castillo, a little reunion. Ooh, okay. All right. Everything's been rearranged. We've got the lineup ready to go. Game one, we win two to one. Game two, we take 11 to eight. Game three, oh man, are we about to, are we about to do a little, little sweep action? Do we get the brooms out? We're going to be home. And do we have like a cool little home uni we can rock? I kind of like the old school with the sleeves. Let's rock that. Great American ballpark. Just a few hours north from me. And I'm going to let Kevin Webster take it. I'm going to let him do it. The prospect that we drafted. Lineups ready to go against this Mariners squad. Caught stealing. That's a big out for us. And a hit by pitch. A single first and second for Kyle Tucker. Pop up. And Rosa Reina can't deliver there. But you know what? I'm feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good. Gets out of that jam. That's big. I need the offense to support our guy here. We need some offense. There's a single. Okay. A walk first and second. Tyler Stevenson hits into the fielder's choice. Bases loaded for Randy. Grounds out. Man, this is this is a little duel going on. Okay. First and third. All right. Give me the little sack fly. He can't bring in the run. Okay. All right. Double to start the inning. One run scores. Thank you, Tyler Stevenson. Our best hitter this entire rebuild. Insane. Bases loaded for Elliot Strickland. And he flies out. And he flies out. Runner thrown out going home. The defense is helping us out today. I, we, just need a, we just need another run. We need that insurance run. Come on. Give it to us. Kyle Tucker four, or makes it a four-run game. Three-run home run. And I'm liking what I'm seeing. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Let's let Webster keep cooking. He's cooking on the mound. Let him do it. Uh, let's get a little sack fly action. Make it a 5 nothing game. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. There we go. Keep it going. Let's get. Let's make it like a 10-run game. Webster, are we serious? A complete game shutout by a 19-year-old in a World Series? 13 strikeouts? 5 hits? What? That's insane. So yeah, um, that just happened to close it out. Oh, I guess he's 20 now. He's 20 now. Ken Webster, take a bow. Is that like the best pitching performance ever in a World Series game? Like, holy cow, awards. What do we have? Tyler Stevenson, MVP. He deserves it. He killed it this entire rebuild. Absolutely insane from day one. From day one. Like, he, he, he just, he added some pop to his game. Yeah, he, he was our star, for sure. I know these numbers... Like the power numbers are a little low, but the on base percentage about 350 plus, like can't ask for more. Killed it. And then obviously postseason MVP as well. Randy was good. Kyle Tucker was good. You know, we'll take a look at our pitching really quick. Webster, absolutely insane. Glasnow struggled a little bit, but Lodolo was unbelievable. 40 strikeouts in 25 innings. Hunter Green was solid. So was Pablo Lopez. DeVarco put in a shift. Let's see our bullpen. Hunter Harvey struggled a little bit, but like realistically, he was still pretty good. And everybody, everybody did their job in the in the pitching squad, the pitching rotation. You, you know what I'm saying. Pitching, the pitching did their job. And uh, let's take a look at our lineup. McCarthy was good. India struggled a little bit, but you know what? I'll take it. I'll take it. Stevenson was unbelievable. Tucker was good. Arosa Rayner. Collier, almost a 300 average. De La Cruz struggled a little bit, but you know what? Everybody else picked him up and we did it with a crazy young squad. 28, 29, 29. 29 31 is our oldest player that's crazy 31 is our youngest player everybody else is like 24 21 29 and then pitching wise we've got 20 28 26 30 glasnow's 32 23 24 29 31 31 32 and 29 that's a crazy young team and that's the Reds rebuild. I hope you enjoyed it. Thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and enjoyed the content. And of course, get in the comment section. Let me know what team to do next. That's about it. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.